Today we will be talking about the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X with their official prices being $99 and $120. There is an underlying reason for this somewhat unexpected launch. At least the official version of this launch is the appearance of the new B550 chipset. Its main idea is to create relatively cheap motherboards, at least cheaper compared to the X570 models. The chipset itself does not offer new Gen 4 links, but the motherboards on its base are supposed to be specifically designed to at least be able to use the processor offered Gen 4 lines. So you can rely on having one or two graphics ports with support for the new version of PCI Express and at least one M.2 NVMe slot. The connection between the chipset and the processor remains PCI Express Gen 3, with the chipset itself offering no additional Gen 4 functionality. The additional PCIe lanes are now supporting Gen 3 standard, unlike its predecessor, which is limited to Gen 2. USB support has also been improved, now offering USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits transfer rate. The basic chipset configuration includes 6 USB 2.0 ports, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 1, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 2, 4 SATA ports and 10 PCIe lanes with an additional 4 lanes used to connect to the processor. The 10 PCIe lanes can be configured in different variants, the manufacturers are free to combine at their discretion. Due to the size and price limitation of the firmware chips, the B550 will not support models that do not have Zen 2 cores. That means that even the Ryzen 3 3200G and 3400G will not be supported even though they are formally part of the current generation, which means it would not have been possible to put a processor for under 200 bucks on a low-end chipset motherboard. But as a bonus, you get a promise of support for Zen 3 models. But that's not all. Zen 3 support is promised only for the B550 and X570. It turns out that working with five generations of processors was an impossible task. And lastly, you should expect the B550 motherboards to hit the market at June 16. Here comes the place for the heroes of this review. AMD announced Ryzen 3 3100 and 3200X to provide some affordable processors for the supposedly more affordable motherboards with B550 chipsets. The two models are based on the well-known Zen 2 architecture, also using a single core chiplet and an IO chiplet configuration. But unlike previous models, this time SMT technology is left active, so you have a total of 8 threads. Here we should note one of the big differences between the two models. Ryzen 3 3100 uses a relatively standard configuration of cores, as from each of the two CCXs in the chip are disabled two cores, and in addition, part of the L3 cache is blocked, that is 8 megabytes on a CCX, 16 megabytes in total. In this sense, the configuration can be seen as direct successor to the Ryzen 3 1200 and 1300X, which are similarly configured. In the Ryzen 3 3300X, however, one entire CCX is disabled, while the other is kept in its full configuration, 4 cores and 16 megabytes of L3 cache. In Zen 2, the latency in the data exchange between the two CCXs is drastically reduced, but still remains much higher than the intra-CCX communication. In addition, the presence of 4 threads in CCX on the Ryzen 3 3100 and twice the size of the L3 cache suggests that the effect of the difference in configuration between 3300X and 3100 will not be as great as that in the Ryzen 3 1200 and 1200AF, but it is certain that there will be an effect, so we will monitor the gaming results. Let's look at the other chip specification as well. First of all, both models have 65 watts TDP. The Ryzen 3 3100 has a base frequency of 3.6 GHz and maximum turbo frequency of 3.9 GHz. The interesting thing here is that during load, I didn't really see the processor drop below 3.9 GHz. The Ryzen 3 3300X does have a 3.8 GHz base frequency and 4.3 GHz maximum turbo frequency. But here too was not without surprise. The processor increased its frequency to 4.35 GHz, quite regularly so and not only in single thread load. For gaming, the frequencies range between 4.25 and 4.5 35 GHz, while for high multi thread load, the frequencies were typically around 4.175 to 4.225 MHz. But enough with the explanations, let's move to the tests. The Zen 2 IPC Advantage, in addition to the relatively high 3300X frequency, puts it at the top of the charts when considering single thread performance, which is quite surprising as we were used to Intel models occupying that spot. Having 4 cores with active SMT technology also helps a lot for multi-threaded performance, with the new Ryzen 3 3300X generally running or par or even slightly faster than the two times more expensive Core i5-9600KF, with the sole exception of handbrake video transcoding, where Intel model takes more notable lead. Overall, the new Ryzen 3 3300X 
i300X is faster both in single threaded as well as multi threaded performance than the Core i5. The situation between Ryzen 3 3100 and the simulated Core i5 9400F is pretty much the same. Looking at comparison with the Ryzen 5 2600, the situation is particularly interesting as the Ryzen 3 3300X lacks around 10 to 15% in rendering, 7 zip data extraction, and X264 video encoding, but offsets it with better performance in X265 encoding, data compression in 7 zip, and with its simply brutal result in WinRAR, manages to come on top even on overall multi threaded application score, not to mention obviously better single threaded results. The situation with 3100 is substantially less clear though, as it's losing with quite big margins in multi threading against the Ryzen 5 2600 while maintaining some single threaded lead. On the gaming front, Intel processors finally managed to demonstrate superiority, with the Core i5-9600KF dominating most of the gaming results, especially by winning all the average FPS results with the sole exception of CSGO. But Ryzen 5 3600X and Ryzen 3 3300X remain quite close to it and in some cases provide better 1% low results. With the simulated Core i5-9400F, the situation is a bit more vague, as in different games it exchanges wins and losses compared to the Ryzen 3 3300X, and the end result is overall less than 1% difference in favor of the Intel processor, so basically both are matched. Below this group remains Ryzen 5 2600 and Ryzen 3 3100, which seems to mostly perform similarly until you take a closer look at the minimum frame rates. There, Ryzen 5 2600 gives a pretty decent 14-15% to higher results in shadow of the Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Battlefield 5, Call of Duty Warzone and Overwatch, which demonstrates that it benefits from having more cores in some games. To that we should also add a notably higher average frame rates in Warzone and Overwatch. It is not all sunshine and rainbows for the older Zen Plus model, as it still manages to take a more notable losses in CSGO and bot Fortnite tests against the new edition. The final result is relative parity between the two, though with slight lead for the older 6 core. The comparison between Ryzen 5 2600 and Ryzen 3 3300X is way less gentle for the older model, as the new 4 core Zen 2 based processor is universally faster in all games except for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. What's more, in some cases the difference is in the excess of 15% up to about 20%, making the new model notably faster on average. And finally, let's talk about the comparison between two cores in two CCXs against four cores in one CCX. Despite our expectations that the difference will be blurred by the higher tail settings, Ryzen 3 3300X demonstrates the benefit of the combined cache and the lack of additional communication between the individual CCXs, showing more than 10% higher results in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Gears 5, and all the online games Fortnite, CSGO, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, and Overwatch, in both average and minimum frame rates. While in Wolfenstein Youngblood, Battlefield 5, and The Division 2, the lead was only in the minimum frame rates, with typical differences of about 15-20%, to 20%, with peaks to almost 40%, however, it is obvious that the single CCX organization has its notable merits for gaming. Still, the expectations of lower difference compared to that between Ryzen 3 1200 and 1200 AF prove to be true. In general, we think that considering only gaming, Ryzen 3 3300X is definitely the better processor from the two newcomers. The consumption of both models is at a nice low level as can be expected from their 65 watts TDP limit. There is not much to say here except that with Zen 2 AMD managed to overtake Intel in terms of energy efficiency. However, the temperature situation is more interesting. It seems that the use of a very compact CCX at the end of the processor leads to a notable increase in temperature in Ryzen 3 3300X compared to Ryzen 3 3100, which is not helped by the 10 watt higher power consumption. We are curious about the location of the active cores of the 3100, whether they are opposed at the ends of the chiplet to improve the temperature behavior. As for overclocking, both processors had no problems reaching 4.35 GHz at 1.3 volts set in the BIOS with average LLC. However, the problem turned out to be the cooling. The temperatures during testing when Prime 95 reached about 90 degrees for the 3100 and even a few degrees above that for the 3300X. And while for the cheaper model this is effectively a relatively adequate 12% overclock, for the 3300X it is largely pointless to even bother. Still, these are the higher clocks I have ever reached with Zen architecture based processor. Finally, the conclusion. If you are looking for a relatively cheap but quite capable gaming processor, then the new Ryzen 3 3300X is a very attractive option. Overall, we were pleasantly surprised by this model, it manages to offer competitive performance in gaming and is being generally faster in application against the twice as expensive Intel model Core i5-9600KF while maintaining lower power consumption. It even manages to somewhat compete with in the multi thread applications with the 6 Ryzen 5 2600 while being notably faster in anything else. Generally speaking, as all the other Zen 2 models, it is well-rounded processor for its price range. The only weak point being its relatively high operating temperature, which will offer you to use an aftermarket cooler instead 
state of the boxed one. Against this background, Ryzen 3 3100 remains a bit in the shadow. The problem with it is that its strengths are not as strong compared to the Ryzen 5 1600 AF or N2600, and its notably lower performance in multi-thread application is quite significant. The gaming performance is also not notably better, achieving practically the same average. Even overclocking is not not much of an advantage, as both older models can be subjected to similar levels of overclock. And while many may be tempted by the idea of $99 model, I think it's definitely worth it to add $20 for the 3300 x especially if it's part of an entire system. Even more so against the background of the fact that 3300X practically makes the entire Core i5 series meaningless up to 9600K or KF models. So that's it for today guys, hope you liked this review, hit like if you liked it, subscribe if you want more, click the notification bell and if you want you can support us on Patreon. Bye!